I did a law degree and I, to boost up my grades, I did film studies, uh, which of course is not filmmaking, it's just film studies. So when I graduated, I knew I did not want to do law and um, I stumbled into like uh, TV script writing uh, because I was writing even before. So I think that then led to meeting people who were interested enough to want to collaborate on making movies. So I think it's, yeah, that's, that's basically it. I met the right people at the right time. Yeah, I guess. Mm. <laughs> I think you have no choice because um, uh, a lot of things are politicized, um, you know. Uh, so to be interested in politics per se, uh, I'm, I've never been interested in sort of individual politicians and that kind of thing. But I've been aware that, uh, for example, the incident that sparked off the big durian, which is um, all of a sudden we were told not to go to school because there was this uh, threat of a riot. Uh, so that inevitably is very political uh, and that affected me. So I thought that's the one incident in 1987 that made me realize there is more to the news than what you see on the news because our news is very censored, it's very propaganda, yeah. So yeah, I suppose that's what got me interested. <laughs> I think Malaysian politics is chugging along. <laughs> we, are, we, we are heading towards a kind of two-party system, which is I think a healthy system, healthier than one party. Uh, so now we just have to pick what is less terrible. <laughs> but you know, um, there is still, I think, a lot of very feudal kind of thinking where you expect the politicians to solve all your problems. So I think people can become much more political once they forget about politicians per se, uh, once they actually become active players. And that's still a relatively new idea because all this while we were told we had to be grateful to the government uh, for doing all these things for us. And now the opposition is coming along with, with a lot Unfortunately, a lot of the same rhetoric, but uh, the other way around. So it's to break away from that. Mm. So it's quite exciting. Yeah, <laughs> it's better than you know not knowing anything. Yeah. Mm. I don't know how to talk to actors. <laughs> so if you see that one, the acting is very uneven, <laughs> and I think I was. It was too much of imitating films I had seen rather than wanting to tell a story of my own. But still, I'm glad I did it because um, only by doing it do you know. You see, <laughs> like, oh, it's, that's how it turns out, yeah. So, but you know, I would like to go back into fiction filmmaking, but in a different way, using, using I think, different methods to arrive at different results, yeah. Well, it's, it was just a funny thing because it was one of those things that it just happened by accident. I was on a bus back from Singapore and I was reading this book that had an essay on the essay film, uh, which I thought, oh, this is very exciting. It's such an exciting essay. It's like 10 pages long, maybe. And um, it was not a manifesto or anything, but it made me curious. So I started thinking, oh, what can I turn into an essay film? And by coincidence, when the bus stopped, I got out and then my wallet got stolen. So I thought, oh, that's an idea. <laughs> so yes, that's, I thought that could be a nice first one. And then I enjoyed it. So I, I conceived of this idea of doing enough to show as a one hour program by itself. So it showed in Malaysia a few times, yeah. So that's it. Mm. Um, I mean, it's hard to say, you know, because I, I imagine them both together. But at the same time, I don't think I'm, I have a very painterly eye for, for landscape or the image or that kind of thing. So I like the image if it is functional, <laughs> if it shows what it needs to show. Uh, so, and I think intrinsic in the idea of essay film is that there needs to be words. Um, you can't be very essayistic with only with images, I think. So, so I, I thought of them as having this balance, I suppose. Um, 
kind of hard to say because it sort of depends on the person watching it, which they think is more important. Uh, it depends uh, on the type because I, I don't think, I don't like repeating, I don't like doing the same thing, you know, um, more than twice. <laughs> doing twice is okay. Um, for something like The Last Communist, that was probably the longest shooting time. I can't remember in terms of days, but we had like, gosh, I can get it mixed up with another one. I think we had like 80 hours of footage. So that was the longest. Uh, and then second was uh, something I did in Indonesia where we had like 50 hours. So that's just like encouraging people to just talk and talk. And because sometimes they need to talk for like 20 minutes and then they say something that I think can be used. Um, and I enjoyed that. I enjoyed uh, talking. And it's, you know, it's cheap. It's not, it's not film, right? It's not Frederick Wiseman, right? So, uh, so it depends. And then something like um, Village People radio show, it's much more condensed because it has to be about only this location and people are not so talkative. So <laughs> I had to like make do with what I had, yeah. So it, it depends, yeah. Mm. Uh, because what was interest, what sparked off that uh, last communist was reading the memoirs of this um, uh, communist leader who was still alive, still alive now. And um, when I read it, actually what interested me most were the towns he grew up in, uh, which are towns I'd never been to. And um, because they are not on the main highway, uh, they, they are kind of bypassed for development. So it made me curious about my own <laughs> country because these are towns that I'd heard of, but so it seemed like a good excuse <laughs> to go traveling and to see uh, how it may be different from his time to now. So that was the original impulse. It's just to, to see things I had not seen um, before. So yeah, yeah. That, and then everything else was just like by instinct, whatever worked whatever seemed right, yeah. Or sometimes wrong, because sometimes it's good to do the wrong thing, yeah. Mm. Well, uh, it's just because I did not want to interview like politicians or spokespeople. It's just I wanted to interview people to see how the environment produced these particular people, because I think a subtext, if you were, of uh, the last communist is that a person is always shaped by the time and place they grew up in. So there's a lot, when we talk about history, a lot of it tends to be in retrospect. In retrospect, you say, oh, this was a bad guy because he did this, this, this. But only if you were there in his shoes at that time, would you know why certain choices were made? And sometimes it's very accidental. You know, a person becomes labeled as something through a series of very accidental events. And that was certainly true of a lot of post-war uh, political activity in Malaysia because um, you know people were so spread out and um, communication was so difficult that in retrospect, people would say, oh, this was a planned thing. But if you actually look at the records of what they said they did, which is of course a level of distancing already, a lot of it would appear to be quite random. So I think that's what interested me as well, the, the difficulty of assigning something very, um, very clear cut. Yeah. Well, to quote a saying by Mae West, I approve of censorship because without it, I would not have a job. <laughs> so um, I think it would be very boring to live in a country that has no taboos because I think the taboos are what's interesting in any society. So in the sense that I'm not surprised by censorship, I'm not like, you know, shocked or whatever every time, but I think it's always very symptomatic. It's always very telling about a society that this is taboo and this is not. For example, you can show a husband beating up a wife on TV, but you can't show them kissing on, on Malaysian TV. So why is this? So to me, that is interesting. Uh, so yeah, censorship is always an, an indicator of what is most interesting about a society, I think. It's like in a horror movie, like 
the first few scenes, somebody will say, oh, there's a door, don't open it. Uh, so of course you're curious what is behind it, so yeah. yeah.